Hey everybody, this is the Grumpy Meeple coming at you today with a very special video. Um, I just got my copy of Chronicles of Drunagor, Age of Darkness, and all of the um, all the expansion packs. Um, it just showed up like 10 minutes ago. I don't actually even think this is all of it. I think I'm missing something. <laughs> How can I possibly be missing something? I am. Where's the... Oh my god, guys. <laughs> this is so much stuff. There's another huge box over here. <laughs> um, wow, that is insane. Uh, yeah, so this is a Kickstarter that ended back in November of 2019. Um, another one, if you've seen some of my other videos where I talk about this, this was another one where I, uh, I did not back it at the time because I was foolishly trying to be kind of more... Uh, choosy about my my purchases and basically since then I've come to realize that um you know it's fine to be choosy about purchases and you shouldn't just back anything but there's a certain type of game that I will always get value out of and that will retain its value and it's these big old dungeon crawler type games now this one is really big like I'm going to show you a comparison in a second here but what we're going to do is this is going to be multiple videos because this is my first unboxing and i suspect it's going to take a while just to unbox this absolutely enormous oh, i mean look at this thing this is just insane this is twice the size of like the zombicide second edition box i'll show it to you you know so there's your zombicide second edition <gasps> <laughs> Chronicles of Drunagor, Zombicide 2nd Edition. Boop! Basically makes two of these. Um, absolutely staggering. You know, not as long as the Gloomhaven box, but almost as wide and kind of thick, I would say. And it might even be thicker. Um, definitely one of the biggest boxes I have right up there with Gloomhaven. Madara is another really big box. Um, I have the Sentinel, the multiverse kind of super box, which I really regret. Anybody who wants to buy Sentinels of the multiverse with a big ass box? Let me know. <laughs> um, that, that box is huge too, but this is a gigantic box. It's going to take a while to go through and I like rambling on, but I don't necessarily want to keep you on stream for an hour and a half. So, um, I'm going to do the core box first. And then if I have time, I will do the stretch goals box and then uh, i'm going to do the the extra boxes in separate videos basically so let me just kind of get all this cleaned up so i didn't back this on kickstarter and i didn't late pledge it so how the hell did i get it because you know this game made about 550 on kickstarter so not bad especially for a relatively new you know kind of unknown company. That was another reason why I didn't back it because at the time you just, you can never know um, miniature quality and, and stuff with a brand new kind of, you know, license or a new player in the game. Um, so, it, you know, it's not like widely available. Um, I actually tracked this down at a store in Georgia called Gigabits Cafe. Um, and I thought I'd just give them a shout out because I, I really appreciated the, uh, the ability to get my hands on this, um, even after the fact. And they shipped it quickly and the price was reasonable, you know. Um, the Kickstarter, like, <laughs> they were running a deal during the Kickstarter where you could get all that crap that I just showed you and more for $230, I think. It was like a Black Friday deal or something or a Halloween deal that's insane like i really should have backed that but i still am happy with the fact that i was just able to kind of get my hands on this at all um so and and i don't live in georgia so they you know they will ship to you i'll put a link to their website um below but it seems like they back a lot of kickstarters and so if you missed something like for instance i know that they have second editions on the side um like the all-in and all-in kickstarter pledge they have it like available right now um so you can go out and 
get your hands on some of this stuff that you missed too if you if you did the same thing I did and kind of try to be try to be a good boy for a while and then realized can't fight your nature guys just cannot fight your nature this is my first unboxing video ever so if it's clunky uh sorry but deal i'm doing this on my game topper i have the four by six i think it's called the moriarty the mycroft the four by six Minecraft game topper. I might actually do a review on this as well because I love this freaking thing and they do have um, a current Kickstarter running and um, I am considering getting another one basically um, <clears throat> or possibly extending this one and making it even bigger for some reason. And we are down in my little kind of game cave. My basement here is kind of half Maybe a third of it is walled off basically by a baby gate. <laughs> um, I'll show you guys real quick. Uh, yeah, you see, to protect my preciouses from my two children, particularly my daughter, who is just a rampaging chaos engine. Um, and then the rest is like a kid's playroom, basically. So there's a blow castle and the slide and stuff down here. So, but this side of it is mine, all mine. And I will fill it with as many game tables as I choose. So let's, so you know, the box is a little worked up. The UPS guy did a real number on this. So I had an order that arrived. I had this and a box, a big box of dog food choked as well. And he had just thrown this on top of it and crushed the box beneath it, which I'm, is better than the other way around, but uh, still, you know, not ideal. So, which, you know, there's your, there's your incredible, awesome cover art. Get your sides there. Look at this guy. Gross. I'm going to set this aside. So, what is this game? What is Chronicles of Drunagor? So, you know, it's another campaign-based dungeon crawl. Um, which tends to be my bread and butter. I will probably do a video sometime about why oh why do i keep buying campaign based dungeon crawls and why will i never stop buying campaign dungeon crawls uh because it's just kind of my bread and butter it's i get the most fun out of these i i tend to get the most use out of them um i like games that you can play solo or with friends um and this one is particularly interesting because it has an element of kind of um, verticality in the dungeons that you'll see. It comes with these game trays where you build like a multi-level dungeon out of them essentially. So that's super interesting to me. And, uh, and like I said, it, at the time I was resistant to backing it because I was unsure of the company and just trying to, trying to, not back everything, but once I saw people start getting it and talking about it online, other people, like real YouTubers, not like this, um, like the King of Average and um, Board Game Co., I knew that I was gonna have to have it. <laughs> so I went out and found it. Luckily, at the, like the one place that still had it. So here, we've got our rule book. I always hate it when people like sit and go line by line through a rule book, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but you know, it's a nice weighty book. It's uh, it's about 55 pages long. Lots of nice illustrations. Here's the the um, the the tile system that I was telling you about the vertical the verticality. You can see this area is raised up. So they're game trays that you lay the tiles on. Um, really clever idea, actually. If you've ever played like um, the Reckoners. That's a game that heavily kind of uses game trays as well. Um, and um, there are game trays in Dice Throne Adventure, which I also might review. That game, that set of game trays is just gorgeous. That's probably the best organized game I've ever gotten um, in terms of uh, the organization actually works. Like I don't feel a need to augment it, which almost never happens. Um, <clears throat> here's the adventure book. It's quite large. It's very 
kind of weighty. Uh, it's 111 pages long and lots of stuff going on here. Lots of missions. So I'll show you this. It could be a slight spoiler. I think it'll be okay. But another thing that's really interesting about this game is they have this kind of points of interaction system um, where you'll find something on the board, like a token or something, and you'll flip to this page and interact with it in the, the following way where you kind of decide what you want to do with it. So do you want to remember the words that the cleric speaks or do you want to search for him and thank him personally? And so it's like a branching path narrative where it'll change what happens next. So that's the adventure book. They've got a start here guide. I have played this on Tabletop Simulator. Um, the mod is decent. Everything about it is fine except for the game trays, actually. They're really weird, and the pieces don't sit on them right. So basically, as soon as I got to the point in the kind of demo where they were trying to build multiple level terrain, I just kind of gave up and said, I'll just wait until my copy shows up. Um, but I used this kind of quick start guide, you know, when I was... Um, when I was playing it on Tabletop Simulator, and it's pretty good. So I think this is like one of those games where you could kind of just take this out and get going, um, which is nice. We've got a flyer for the next game in the series or the expansion. I'll do this in movie guy voice. As we all know, the world has changed. Darkness has come. We have fought. We keep fighting. But in 2021, the apocalypse is coming. Dun, dun, dun. So, looks like they've got an expansion coming out this year um, on Kickstarter. I'll be very excited about that. There's some discussion amongst with the publisher about what, if anything, they're going to be able to reprint in that expansion. And it wasn't clear that they were going to be able to reprint everything which is another reason I moved on it now instead of just waiting for that Kickstarter um, because I would hate to not kind of be able to get my stuff. Um, oh, here we've got a nice letter from Team CGS. I'm not going to read that on the air, but I will take a look at it after the fact. Here we've got Player's Aid chart. Just one, oddly. Um, I will photocopy that and then laminate it so that I have multiple copies and I can write on it. Same thing with this. I have a little home laminator that uh, I do that kind of business on so I can use a dry erase marker on it. Over here you can see my Shadows of Brimstone hex crawl set up and you'll see I have these big player boards and I laminate. I got those printed at FedEx and professionally laminated so that I can write on them. Um, but this is your campaign tracker where you're going to kind of do your progress. And there's lots of sheets in here. There's really, there's no reason you can't just use that. You know, us board gamers that were just like weird OCD. Nobody wants to actually use the parts that came in the game. I don't know if it's just because in 30 years when I want to sell it, I want everything to be intact. I don't know, but, um, so I'll probably laminate it. And then we have these tiles, um, which are, very cool, very colorful and detailed. Um, let's pop this open. Let's take a look here. Pop, pop, pop. Uh, here we go. Okay. So interesting. It's like a kind of like a heavy cardstock, maybe. But they're nice. They're nice and glossy and detailed. And you can see they, they're numbered to make it a little bit easier to find what you're looking for. And got symbology and such on them that I don't really under know or understand because I only played the demo for like half an hour. We'll probably won't pull all those out necessarily on camera. but Because as you can see, like I have not even made a remote dent in this abomination of a box. So it's going to take forever to get through this stuff. There's some more tiles, some larger ones. I'm kind of set those over here. So this is really interesting. This is another interesting part of this kind of gameplay system. These are the door cards. And the way that these work is 
you take them out of the shrink and you fold them into a door, basically. And then you put them on the game tray where the door goes. And so instead of going back to the book to see kind of what happens next, you simply pull the door down and then open it up and it tells you what happens next in the next room. So it like procedurally generates the room um, with with the door itself instead of having to have like a deck of cards or, or double the size of the um, of the adventure book. So that's an interesting idea in and of itself, but where they really took it to the next level was they added these QR codes to the doors. And what this does, and you can see it says, dare you tempt the hand of fate. By using this QR code, you will be directed to our door database where new challenges await you. So you play through this game and you wanna play it again and you don't wanna have the same experience. When you open door number three, instead of looking at the back, you scan this code and it will take you to a database of of additional doors and randomly select one for you basically um it'll still i assume still fit thematically like with the the mission that you're on and whatnot and probably contain much of the same things but things will be laid out differently and um just a really cool idea really really cool way and something i've never seen before actually in a game to extend the life of your game and um kind of keep things interesting so here we've got the interactions book. This one is spiral bound. Interesting. Pull that out. And this is, this is all those points of interest that I was talking about. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, really nice, nice book. Spiral bound, I like that. And so it's it's probably spiral bound so that it can, you know, like nicely sit flat on the table. It's nice that they thought of that. A lot of companies would not think about that and honestly wouldn't give a shit. They would just <laughs> kind of grab it out there and move on. Uh, we've got a bag. This is for these tokens, which interact with these kind of uh, polyomino tokens. I think that's what you call those. Uh, so you stick these tokens in the bag, you pull one out. Um, it's, you know, printed on there nice. It's not just like, uh, I don't know. It's not like somebody made that with a cricket at home or something. Um, nothing against crickets. My wife has a cricket and she's actually making me um, a Grumpy Maple t-shirt with it. So um, that'll be super cool. Got some cardboard here. Uh, probably not gonna... Not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'm gonna set that off to the side. I don't know that there's anything super interesting in there. And then we get to kind of the meat and potatoes here. So these are the game trays. Um, it looks like these ones are specifically for, I believe they're for like character storage or just for storing the components in the game basically. So, but you can see these are, man, game trays. They just make like the, the dopest stuff. I got Kingdom Rush, um, Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. I backed that Kickstarter and I went all in on that. And it came with, uh, the all in came with a, a storage, a separate storage solution that was supposed to be like game tray like. Um, and it is trash. <laughs> it's such trash that they actually had to go back and basically redo it in their recent Kickstarter. Um, I can't remember the name of the second game, but it's kind of um, like earth themed. Um, and they, they redid it and they're sending it to backers basically for free um, of the first game because um, because the, the lids wouldn't lock on. The lids wouldn't lock on and it was just really thin and like breaking. Um, so we've got some, some bases in here right now, big bases and small bases, toss those to the side. And then you got your game trays, which I think are, it's got this nice like embossed kind of logo on it. And I think that these are like probably for like hero, hero storage because there's four of them. So you can throw your miniature um, and whatnot in there and and um, have everything ready to go next time. All right, moving on. We've got something falling out of my box. I don't know what that is. That's odd. 
I'm assuming that's like a piece. Probably just some anthrax or something. We'll be fine. We got some cards. <laughs> Guys, I have kind of a weird sense of humor. So. Uh, and then we got some dice. Some nice dice. So this one, I have no goddamn idea what this is. I did not have to roll this while I was playing. This is like your attack die, basically. Um, so yeah, I think I might actually just keep those in there. So let's take a look at some cards. It looks like these are kind of item cards and ability cards. Let me get my knife here and crack these bad boys open. Be careful, kids. Don't hurt yourselves with the sharp knives. Okay, so yeah, this looks like the item deck. Items and consumables, I think. Yeah, so lots of stuff there, you know. Kind of hold it to the camera so you can see here. You got your potion of mana. You got, what is that? The bloody axe. The ring of precision. The blood rust blade, that sounds dope. Guy was just such a hard ass. He's just like, you know what? I'm not even gonna clean your blood off of this. I'm gonna kill the next guy with your blood. <laughs> Unbelievable. Doesn't even kill him with the wound. He just kills him with the infection. The infection gives him COVID. Passing it along with the freaking blood rust blade. And then we got another one here. guys let me know in the comments you know the way I talk on stream is you know mostly the way I talk in real life um I keep calling it on stream because I don't know what else to refer to it as um it's not really like when I think of video I think of like a VHS um <laughs> so um yeah so I just kind of jabber away and I'm not super careful about being particularly you know PC or or whatever. Um, if that bothers anybody, let me know in the, in the chat and I'll, I'll consider at least I'll, I'll take that feedback. Um, I would think it would be, you know, kind of one of the, I don't think it'd be very interesting if I was just kind of robotically like watching my, watching my words, you know? Um, but I'm still new at all this. So what the hell do I know anyways? So we got more, more items of some kind of different type here. I don't, I don't know what the difference is. And I also don't know why I put these over here instead of here where they should go. Except they probably separate out exactly as they were delivered. Okay. So those are treasure cards maybe. And then these are the really the, the interesting ones, I think. These are... Um, these are roll cards, I believe. So this game has this system where you have a class um, with your associated with your character, and then your character also takes on a role in the dungeon, um, much like you would in like World of Warcraft or something like that. So it looks like you've got level one, two, and three support for um, level one, two, and three for support. And so you can see they they have abilities and on them. And the 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 basic gameplay here is kind of similar to Conan or Batman um, Gotham City Chronicles. If you've played that, sorry guys, let's get the camera to stop shaking. Um, where you're moving cubes around, and the cubes represent like the number of actions you can take. And so you can see here, this is a support card. It'll use any of the cubes because there are basically four ability cubes. And it says, remove a curse, heal two, and cleanse one. So, and they have these different, um, I'm going to have to figure out a different way to mount this camera. Right now, I have the camera mounted actually on a chair, on the back of a chair, which I wish I could sit in, but because my back's hurting from leaning over this thing, but this box is so huge, I don't think I could see into it. Um, and so they have they have various roles. So you have your support, you have... Um, a striker, a leader, a defender, and a controller. So that's a really cool idea because you're just, you're multiplying the different, the levels of 
kind of decisions that you get to make when you go into the dungeon. You know, it's not just that you're the cleric. Are you the cleric support or are you the cleric, you know, healer or, or whatever or controller? And they're limited by, by roles. Basically, your class card will have this symbol on it if it's compatible with the class um, or with that role. So uh, a really interesting idea and then kind of a nod to kind of World of Warcraft MMO roles in general, you know, like tanks and such. Looks like we've got some bad guy cards here and some ability cards. So what do we got here? Obviously, I don't know what any of this stuff actually is. Yeah, I think that these are ability cards. Um, so as you level up, you get you get more cards. So that's for the warrior hero class. Um, and so you can see it'll give you like, you can choose, do I want precision? Do I want weapon expertise? Or do I want master stroke? And, and it's kind of like a tech tree. So precision is the level one ability in the blade master tree. And then you choose between weapon expertise or master stroke, or I suppose you could choose both if you had enough cards um, or enough XP. Very cool. Super into, you know, the kinds of things that I'm drawn to in games, um, especially of this type. Narrative is a big thing for me. I like a game that tells or at least attempts to try to tell a story. Um, I like variable player powers. So, you know, I like being the the striker or the the warrior you know i like being able to change that up come back the next time and play as a different class um and i like you know i i like uh i like the ability cube system i think that that's really cool and a cool take on kind of um something just something different than your kind of standard descent like just like rolling dice and and you get two actions per turn and whatnot you get some more decisions to make with a system like that um so here we've got more tiles very nice and the hits just keep on coming guys more cards i don't think i'll open this set but it looks like more kind of more of the same you've got some uh weapon cards and then there's something interesting going on here. Oh, these are the rune cards. So this is kind of like the dungeon kind of difficulty. So as you go, you flip this card over. Um, when you hit this card, you'll flip it over. And on the other side, it'll say draw two runes, basically. And runes are bad because they are what is spawning the darkness. And so the way that the darkness works is... Um, these polyomino tiles are the darkness. And let me, let me bust this open real quick. I'll go ahead and bust this open. I'm not going to show you every single piece of cardboard in here, but I'll get a darkness token out. And I'll get a rune out. Let me bust it open. Just give me a minute, guys. Jeez, you know. It's not as easy to do this stuff on, on, on the fly as you might think. It's a lot of pressure. I don't even know why I put myself through this. Just kidding. I'm having a lot of fun with this channel. And that's all that this is for, really. I'm not... <laughs> I have no... I have a very good full-time job. So, quite happy with my kind of state of living. And not really trying to monetize this or get much out of it. But beyond finding maybe some people who... I just like talking about this stuff, honestly. And um, my friends who are not board gamers um, and my family and such do not and do not want to hear me talk about it all the time and so i thought you know what there's got to be somebody there's seven billion people on this planet there's got to be at least 30 people who would be interested in hearing this and lo and behold we are at like 33 34 subscribers already guys it hasn't even been a week so there's there's lots of people who are interested in this stuff so this is one of the darkness tiles, and the way that this will play out is, oops, throw this right here. Like, this box is so huge that it just is like an additional play space, <laughs> right? So here's your tile, and what you'll do is you'll pull one of these, and it'll tell you um, out of that bag. So let's replicate it, guys. Let's replicate it. Boop. 
Okay. Oh, oh, okay. We've got a pull of darkness. What's it going to be? Oh, it's the green one. And it's that, except we're going to pretend it's that because this is what I snapped out. Um, <clears throat> and then there'll be these spots on the board. This is like the darkness spawn zone. And so what you would do is you have to place this on here and it basically empowers the bad guys and hurts you. Um, so if you're standing there, you'll get covered by it and it'll do damage to you every round. And then it keeps spreading on itself. It keeps kind of multiplying. So it's uh, like a really cool like timer, basically. Um, it forces you to keep moving through the dungeon, right? You can't just you can't just sit there and heal yourself all day. Can I say too, this, um, you know, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about the cardboard, but this is actually really nice, really thick cardboard. Um, this is nice. And, you know, I love, sh like, Shadows of Brimstone over here, one of my all-time favorite games. I have more Shadows of Brimstone stuff than you could even imagine. You can see it off screen over here, parts of it, like a tiny fraction of it. Um, I must have over here about 25 boxes of stuff that I bought recently because it's kind of going out of print and getting hard to, to buy. Um, just sitting in shrink, um, I love that game, but um, the cardboard and some the, some of the other components in that game are shit, <laughs> honestly. Um, the game is incredible. The cardboard sucks. The tiles suck. I've had to actually have entire sets replaced because they were so warped. I should show you this sometime. I had one that it was bowed like, you know, it was like I was trying to play in a, in a freaking depression, you know, or something. It was like in the, it was crazy. Um, and so I had to reach out to Flying Frog and, and say, hey, by the way, you know, I spent like $1,000 on this game in the last three months. And I didn't do that so that I could have my guys like literally so, so warped that they couldn't stand on it. They would fall off. And the tiles in that game interlock and they wouldn't interlock because... It was such crap. I say all that to say this seems to be very nice cardboard that is very thick and not like that at all. So I do appreciate that. And if you saw me talking about Marvel United, you know, that's kind of one of the things about that game too. The components, the cards, and the everything but the miniatures in that game is kind of not that great. Um, okay. So now we've got more game trays. And this one looks like a token organizer. Oh, okay, yes, it's for the darkness tiles. Guys, I just love this stuff. Like, when a company takes the time to really, ooh, and you can see the miniatures down there, we're, we're getting to the good stuff. When they take the time to build um, a, a workable storage solution that, and they don't chinch out on it, they go chintz, chintz. They don't, they don't slack on it. They go to game trays and they say, look, we know you're more expensive than the other guys, uh, but your shit's going to last, you know? This is great. The lid is going to snap on. I don't even have to try it to know that it's, you know, going to stay on there. Um, there's your game trays logo. So really nice. Because when they don't do this, then I end up having to do this. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be doing a review about this, but this is Shadows of Brimstone, and these are my sum of a tiny fraction of my custom organizers that I have for this game, uh, where I just buy Stanley 25 organizers and um, cannibalize them to store all the pieces. Now, Brimstone gets a pass because there are there must be three or 4,000 tokens in the set that I have, so no game could organize that, but... Too many games require this kind of storage, um, for me at least, because I don't want to spend, you know, an hour setting up the game or trying to find the goddamn, you know, oh, where's the 100 token? You know what I mean? I just want it kind of laid out. And so when a company takes the time to build that system into their box, uh, I appreciate it and I call it out. And... Um, and that's what I'm doing right now. So now here are the character cards. Very cool looking. So this is interesting because these are actually like the new character cards, like kind of the updated ones. If you look at the campaign on Kickstarter, which I will link to below, 
um, there's a second set of character cards that's in the stretch goal box. And that's because originally they were using the, the second set. Um, and kind of halfway through the campaign, they realized, hey, there's a better way to lay this stuff out. And they built this. And then backers said, hey, we liked the other set. At least a subset of them did. And um, Creative Game Studios said, oh, okay, well, we'll give you both then. You know, so a really nice touch, you know. They could easily have said, oh, you like that? Um, well, mm, you know, uh, go fuck yourself, <laughs> you know. Uh, but they didn't. They threw both of them into the box. Um, and so these are really cool. And so what you're seeing here are the class cards, basically. So I want to make sure that you can see. Gonna... Whoa, zoom. There you got Elros, the Elf Assassin. And you've got Shadow, the Ifrit Assassin. So the interesting thing here is that if you look at their abilities, Poison Blade, Corrupted Knives, Battle Focus, Twin Throw, um, they are both assassins, but they have different abilities. Focus, Cleanse, I'm assuming. Are they the, are they the exact same ability, just named differently? No, they're different. Corrupted Knives, plus zero hit, plus zero hit. Um, so that means it lets you attack twice. That is different than Poisoned Blade, which gives you plus three to hit and poison one on a single attack. So really cool and a ton of gameplay in here. Um, damn it, I cut my video off, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to edit that. Um, but I'm probably gonna switch back to kind of the regular camera here, there we go. Um, so here we've got the Cleric, Protective Light. And then you've got, um, so this is, they're both human clerics. Uh, you can see he's got Turn the Wicked, so a different ability set. Lorelei the Elf Mage, and Arkanos the Human Mage. And then you've got Maya the Ranger. She doesn't have a second card because um, the other Ranger, the Elf Ranger, is his own box. He came in this. I don't know why they chose the Ranger specifically for that, but... It was like, um, you know, like a 24 hour, it was like back at during the campaign and you get the other ranger basically kind of a deal. Um, I don't think anybody could complain that they're not throwing enough stuff into this box. So I'm okay with that. Um, and then you get the dwarf warrior, two dwarf warriors. Oh, look at that, look at that dope ass berserker. <laughs> then you've got, um, you've got the undead king and the camp. This is the phase that you do between rounds basically um very cool and your game tray here for your tiles has a built-in has a built-in uh let me just give it a more yeah it's got a little built-in alcove for your character cards very nice that got another Token organizer. Oops, I those on top. Oh, I see. So the, this is this is like a permanent place to organize these, basically. Um, that's cool. More tiles. Very cool. Deal with getting all this back into its appropriate place off stream. And then just more game trays again. You got the snap on the lid so that you know it's not gonna they're not gonna fall out of there. Beautiful. Here we go, guys, the miniatures. And this is the kind of the main event. And what ultimately sold me on this was um, King of Average got his hands on this and um, and reviewed and reviewed it. And, and the miniatures were so cool looking. And he was so impressed. And if you watch that guy's content, he is very specific about what comes in his miniatures. Uh, what kind of quality they are he's looking like he'll have a little thing where he's like oh see blah, blah, there's this little i'm not gonna do that um i will leave that's his shtick i will leave that to him also i love king of average but i do occasionally find that a little bit kind of finicky but um not to call you out bro you're a real streamer i'm nobody um but here you go game tray for your miniatures. There is something still, some more anthrax rolling around in there. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? What the hell is that? 
don't know. Whatever. <laughs> sure, it's fine, guys. Sure, it's fine. I really need to get this table cleaned up. Shadows of Brimstone is the kind of game that you don't, I don't at least set this, especially the hex crawl system, which is what I'm playing. You don't set this up for a day. You set this up for a month or a year. Um, so it's kind of dominating that side. I'm still trying to get through that gameplay of uh, Zombicide Second Edition, which I'm going to try and finish up tonight. And and so I'm running, even on a four by six table like this, I'm running out of room. But um, But yeah, so here's your miniatures. And let's let's get into it. So these are nice trays. You know, painters love the love it when these trays don't snap fit, um, so that they don't they don't screw up your paint jobs. I, I don't think I'm really good enough to have to worry about that necessarily. I do a perfectly fine job of screwing up my own paint jobs. But um, yeah, these are these are really nice miniatures. He was definitely on point with his review um lots of detail nice and nice and weighty too surprisingly like not um not flimsy these guys look at that that is super freaking cool look at that side oh i love it i love how one blade is large longer than the other two it's asymmetrical that's really cool um and then Look at his cloak. Is that it's like a face in his cloak? He's got like screaming, a screaming face, a face made out of skin or a cloak made out of skin or something like that. That's a really freaking cool miniature, especially to come out of nowhere, you know, relatively. These guys have made other games, but they have never made a giant um, kind of dungeon crawl that's trying to compete with like cool mini or not, you know. Um, here you've got some kind of giant pus-filled fat sack of crap here. Look at his giant ridiculous hands. And he's got, you know, like an arrow sticking out of him and a guy. Is that a guy? Like pulling out of his skin? I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't have a good sense of how the focus is working here. Um, very cool. We've got kind of um, we've got our kind of archer, our undead archer. Very cool. This is really cool. His quiver, you know, the fact that it's kind of not just like kind of drawn on there is nice because it does make it a lot easier to paint. This guy, I don't know what the hell's going on here. But um, some kind of, is he riding on something or sitting on something? Or has he just got like this weird big kind of cloak on him? Hard to tell, but a very cool miniature. And you can see no bent pieces or everything looks pretty much as it should. Um, and and very, very detailed. I'm not a master of this stuff like like some people are, but um, being only kind of a, a middling painter, but I know that, you know, having this recessed kind of thing in the ax just, it does make it easier to paint because, you know, you can paint the outside a different color than kind of the inside if you want. I hope that that's focusing okay. That's the dwarf. Super cool. Oh yeah, and then the other thing too is you have these bases too, these nice kind of customized bases. More and more, this this kind of stuff just needs to happen. Um, you know, it, it's kind of becoming the norm and it's a really nice touch um, because then you don't have to do it yourself. You should see me over here fucking around with sand and stuff, trying to texture, texture bases and get them to look halfway decent. 
really cool. Look at that shield. That, that's, that shield is freaking incredible, the detail on that. I hope the lighting here is okay because, again, I'm kind of off on the edge of my table. I'm not really centered on the light. and It's looking a little dark to me, but my vision is crap, so I would not know any better. Okay. There's your elf wizard. Wow. Look at look at the back of her cloak again. You've got these kind of intricate designs, and they're, they're sculpted on there. It's really nice. And then even on the bottom, look at this. Hey, look, draw kind of sour, sour, sour puss face on there, and you got the grumpy meeple on your miniatures. Let's see somebody out there paint this and put a grumpy meeple on the bottom. That would be dope. I should do it myself, I guess, huh? Um, and there you go. I think that's Maya. And again, look at that crossbow. That is really cool. These are really nice miniatures. Kudos. To creative game studios and especially for a game that didn't you know this game didn't make two million dollars um, it was certainly successful you know 500 it's well over what they were kind of looking for but it it didn't blow the roof off the joint you know this I believe is for organizing more of the tiles cubes on cubes on cubes these are your um, ability cubes, basically. And again, they give you a nice big spot to just kind of... Look at this. Here's some more of this weird stuff floating right in here. Guys, anybody tell me what that is? Is that a rat dropping? What is that? <laughs> it's probably silicate. Um, because there were, there were some silicate packets in there. With the silicate packets in there, which I do appreciate. I use those myself all the time. Um... To, I just throw them in with my games to keep the boards from warping because I've had that problem in the past. We'll do him last. Whoa. Man. Okay, so now we're getting into the big boys here. Sorry, guys. Bear with me on the camera stuff. I am still learning. I'll try and figure out something better. Um, but you don't even need that good of a... First of all, it's huge. Let me grab a Zombicide Abomination. That's comparison so here's an a-bomb from second edition um and here's this giant guy so he just absolutely dwarfs even the a-bomb um from second edition huge and there are it looks like three of these so there's only four A-bombs in second edition. So it's not it's not like they made just like one big guy and, you know, they're just big. And he's got the, like chains on them. Just so much detail in these. Really, really impressive. Those guys are the same. Then you've got these guys. With the kind of ball and chain, dope ass sword. You can see like this is really, this is really great on like stuff like this where it's, it's really textured because, it 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 does make it easier to paint. And then again the textured base you can see, and the chains and stuff. Impressive most impressive and then finally i i think at least the final star of the show i don't see any other miniatures you've got the big boy this is whatever i don't know dreadlord fartington or whatever his name is uh no disrespect no disrespect to you bro i'll get your name um and this again like a bomb dreadlord fartington Creative Game Studios, if you watch this, please don't hate me. I'm just goofing around. I think this game looks freaking awesome. Look at that, like, faces on his... He's got, like, heads on his shit. He's like, I, uh, these are all the other people that tried to come up against me. You won't be you won't be part of my cloak, bro. He's got the book with writing on it. 
and the staff, which is damn near perfect. Like it's not warped, you know, but I don't, I wouldn't even bother trying to do anything with that. And just like, can you hear that? Like it's so textured that you can just like run your fingernail on it. And I don't have any fingernails cause I bite my nails cause I'm OCD or whatever. I don't know. Um, okay. So that's everything in the Chronicles of, the, of Darkness, Chronicles of Drunagor, Age of Darkness core set. And I'm exhausted. I don't know how long this will end up being, but it's too long for me to open another box on this same stream. So I'm going to call it there. I got to figure out how to hack these two videos together anyways. And um, I will be back later with an unboxing of, of um, the rest of the stuff. We'll start with the stretch goals. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.